Welcome to today's program. The American Library Association's Youth Media Awards Press Conference will begin shortly after the announcements of this year's recipients of the Alex Awards. The Alex Award is given to 10 books written for adults that have special appeal to young adults ages 12 through 18. Sponsored by the Margaret A. Edwards Trust and Book List and administered by the Young Adult Library Services Association, the awards were first given annually beginning in 1998 and became an official ALA award in 2002. The awards are named after Margaret Alexander Edwards, who was called Alex by her friends. Edwards was a pioneer in young adult librarianship. Working with teens for many years at the Enoch Pratt Library in Baltimore, she served as an inspiration to many librarians who serve young adults. This year's 10 winning titles are All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr, published by Scribner, a division of Simon and Schuster Incorporated. Bellwether Rhapsody by Kate Raculia, published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, Harcourt Publishing Company. Bingo's Run by James Levine, published by Spiegel and Grau, an imprint of the Random House Publishing Group, a division of Random House LLC, a Penguin Random House Company. Confessions by Kaniai Minato, translated by Stephen Snyder. Published by Mulholland Books, an imprint of Little Brown and Company, a division of Hachette Book Group, Incorporated. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Published by the Penguin Press, a member of Penguin Group, LLC, a Penguin Random House Company. Lock In by John Scalzi, a tour book published by Tom Doherty, Associates, LLC. The Martian by Andy Weir, published by Crown Publishers, an imprint of the Crown Publishing Group, a division of Random House, LLC, a Penguin Random House Company. The Terrorist's Son, a story of choice by Zach Ibrahim with Jeff Giles. Published by Ted Books, a division of Simon and Schuster Incorporated. Those Who Wish Me Dead by Michael Corita. Published by Little Brown and Company, a division of Hachette Book Group Incorporated. Wolf in White Van by John Darnielle, published by Farrar, Strauss, and Giraud. For more information on the Alex Awards, including a list of vetted nominations, please visit ala.org slash YALSA slash book lists slash Alex. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this snowy, snowy morning. 
My name is Chris Shoemaker, and I am president of the Young Adult Library Association, more commonly known as YALSA. Thank you. Welcome to the 2015 announcements of the American Library Association's Youth Media Awards. For those of you watching online, we're thrilled you're able to join us. And for those of you here in Chicago, it's great to be with you at the premier event for recognition of books and media for adults, children, and young adults. I would like to welcome all the members of the media, our publishing contacts, and other guests. Thank you to the committees who have had the excitement and joy and challenges of selecting the materials for this award. I would like to introduce someone that you have had the opportunity and the pleasure to work with. Please help me in welcoming Courtney Young, the president of the American Library Association. Good morning. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. In, fi in fact, among the highlights of serving as ALA president is being part of this very celebration, as well as being among the first to know which video, audiobooks, books, and authors are voted best of the best. Today's announcements illustrate one of the fundamental roles that librarians and library staff play in transforming lives and empowering parents and caregivers with youth-friendly materials that will encourage children and teens to foster a love for reading. Reading is a vital link. It's a vital skill that helps us to make sense of the world around us. Our country is a melting pot of cultures. Yet the percentages of children's books released each year, either by a person of color or with a multicultural theme, fall, fails to compare with the country's rapid shift in demographics. In order to understand the world around us, children of all cultural backgrounds deserve to have access to print and digital materials that are reflective of our society, build self-esteem, and cultural awareness. As a child, I looked to my school and public libraries to find a sense of self. I am truly thankful to the librarians and library workers that helped find Courtney Young. As each positive influence laid the groundwork for the ALA president that you see right here before you, I truly am grateful. Today's announcements of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, Pura Del Play Award, Schneider Family Book Award, and Stonewall Awards, among other noteworthy selections, illustrates the profession's efforts to help change the publishing landscape by fueling demand for materials that mirror our diverse society. I am so proud of our award committees, librarians and library workers, for putting diverse books in the hands of youth and providing them with the educational resources to quash intolerance and to end cultural invisibility. On behalf of myself, the ALA and its executive board, I want to thank the award committees who worked so hard to select today's recipients. I'm sure today's selections will carry on the professional eff profession's efforts to raise a nation of avid readers. Before we begin today's announcements, I would like to take a moment to thank the Youth Media Awards sponsor, 3M Cloud Library, for its generous financial support. We have 3M Cloud Library representatives in the audience today. Would you please stand and be recognized? This year, this year we will announce 19 awards that recognize the best selections in books and media for children and young adults. Please note that due to the short production time between the selection of award recipients and this morning's announcements, presentation slide information was cited from the copyright page of selected titles and from the covers of selected media. 
In some cases, cited information may have changed since the material was published or produced. In such cases, publishers and producers will have an opportunity to update their information after our announcements. So now let's go on to the announcement of the Schneider Family Book Awards. The Schneider Family Book Awards, donated by Dr. Katherine Schneider, honor an author or illustrator for a book that embodies an artistic expression of the disability experience for child and adolescent audiences. The award is given annually for the best children's, teen, and middle school book administered annually by the American Library Association. This year's winners are for best young children's book, A Boy and a Jaguar, written by Alan Rabinowitz, illustrated by Katya Chin, and published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company. As a young boy, Alan Rabinowitz felt alienated due to his uncontrollable stutter. Relief comes when speaking to animals. He vows to be the voice and keep them from harm. Making good on that promise, Rabinowitz advocates on behalf of the Jaguars of Belize. The recipient for the Schneider Family Book Award Best Middle School Grade Book is Rain Rain, written by Ann M. Martin and published by A. Fywell and Friends Books, an imprint of Macmillan. Rose's life is regulated by rules, her love for her dog, Rain, prime numbers, and homonyms in almost equal measure. When a superstorm causes a tumult to Rose's life and that of her community, she is faced with needing to make a courageous choice. And our final award, best teen book, is Girls Like Us, written by Gail Giles, published by Candlewood Press. After completing their high school special education program, Biddy and Quincy are placed as roommates to Biddy's delight and Quincy's horror. Through unflinching dual points of view, these young women discover that they have much to gain and learn about life from each other, including a sense of family. I would like to thank Jury Award Chair Allison Beecher and her jury. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Our next award is the Stonewall Book Awards, Mike Morgan and Larry Roman's Children's and Young Adult Literature Award. Sponsored by the Book Awards Committee of the Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgendered Roundtable, the award is given annually to English language books of exceptional merit relating to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered experience. The committee chose to honor to three honor books. They are Beyond Magenta, Transgender Teams Speak Out, written and photographed by Stu Susan Cucklin, published by Candlewick Tress. I'll Give You the Sun, written by Jandy Nelson, published by Dial Books, an imprint of Penguin Group USA, LLC. Morris Micklewhite in the Tangerine Dress, written by Christine Baldaccio, illustrated by Melissabel Maleffant, published by Groundwood Books, House of Nancy Press. The winner of the 2015 Stonewall Book Awards, Mike Morton and Larry Roman's Children and Young Adult Literature Award is this Day in June, written by Gail E. Pittman, PhD, illustrated by Christina Litton, published by Imagination Press, an imprint of the American Psychological Association. This Day in June depicts a child's eye view of a pride parade and the, conveys the excitement, energy, and diversity of many varieties of queer life. I would like to thank the award committee chair, Rebecca D. Hunt, and her committee for today's selections. Would you all please stand and be recognized? Thank you very much, Courtney. For everyone uh, recording the information just announced, I would like to remind you that there will be a press release of today's winners, and that will be available immediately following our presentation on a table just outside of this room. So don't rush out and try and get a jump on um, the, the, pre the upcoming winners. You can also visit ALA's ilovelibraries.org 
for a list of today's winners and other announcements of notable and distinguished books for media, or, or, of media for children, teens, and adults. Now, I would like you to please welcome Jonda McNair, chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, who will announce her committee's selection. Hello, I'm John D. McNair, chair of the Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards commemorate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and honors Mrs. Coretta Scott King for continuing her husband's work. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee, a division of the American Library Association's Ethnic and Multicultural Information Exchange Roundtable, administers the awards annually. Our first award is the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement. The award is presented in odd years to an African American practitioner for substantial contributions to education using African American winning literature for youth. The award is named in memory of award winning children's author Virginia Hamilton. Hamilton wrote more than 35 books throughout her career and received numerous awards, including the Coretta Scott King Book Award, the Newbery Medal, and a host of others. The recipient of the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement is Deborah D. Taylor. Where is Deb? All right, Deb. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Deb. <laughs> Taylor's career in public service began more than 40 years ago with the Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore, where she is currently coordinator of school and student services. Her career has been spent as mentor, educator, and literacy advocate for young adults. As an inspiring young adult librarian, leader in national associations and university instructor, she has been distinct distinctly effective in introducing young people and her professional colleagues to the outstanding work of African American authors. I would like to thank award chair Loretta Dowell and the Coretta Scott King Virginia Hamilton Award for Lifetime Achievement Committee who made today's announcement possible. Will you all please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Next are the Coretta Scott King Book Awards, which honor African American authors and illustrators of outstanding books for children and young adults that promote the understanding and appreciation of all people. First is the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for New Talent. This year's recipient is Jason Reynolds for When I Was the Greatest. Written by Jason Reynolds and published by Athenium Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon and Schuster Children's Publishing Division. Living in an underserved neighborhood in Brooklyn, Alan Lee befriends Noodles and his brother Needles, who has Tourette syndrome. In an authentic contemporary voice, Reynolds focuses on the importance of family, the acceptance of responsibility, and the obligations of friendship, and portrays a likable teenager learning how to be a good man. The committee selected two illustrator honor books. Christian Robinson for Josephine. <laughs> Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker, written by Patricia Harubi Powell, published by Chronicle Books, LLC. And Frank Morrison for Little Melba and her big trombone. Written by Katherine Russell Brown, published by Lee and Low Books Incorporated. 
The Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award goes to Christopher Myers. For Firebird, written by Misty Copeland and published by G.P. Putnam Sons, published by the Penguin Group, Penguin Group USA. Christopher Myers created a pas de two, a vibrantly colored, mixed media collages with fluid lines that dance off the page. By illustrating Misty Copeland's fictional account of inspiring a young girl to embrace the dance like the firebird of her dreams, he also moves readers to pursue their own passions. The Coretta Scott King Book Awards Committee chose three author honor books. They are Kwame Alexander for The Crossover, <laughs> published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing, Marilyn Nelson for How I Discovered Poetry, illustrated by Hadley Cooper and published by Dow Books, an imprint of Penguin Books USA. And Kekla Magoon for How It Went Down. Published by Henry Holt and Company, LLC. I am pleased to announce the winner of this year's Coretta Scott King Author Award, Jacqueline Woodson. for Brown Girl Dreaming. <laughs> published by Nancy Paulson Books, published by the Penguin Group, Penguin Group USA. An absorbing free verse memoir of a young girl growing up black and female in the 1960s and 70s is full of arresting details and vivid imagery. Her choice of events and memories incorporate important historical events and her own evolution into the award-winning writer she has become. I would like to thank Kim Patton and the Coretta Scott King jury who made today's announcement possible. Will you all please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Now it's my turn to announce things. <laughs> I'm excited to announce the awards administered by YALSA. The mission of YALSA is to expand and strengthen library services for teens aged 12 to 18. Through member-driven advocacy, research, and professional development initiatives, YALSA builds the capacity of library staff and librarians to engage, serve, and empower teens. YALSA is the fourth largest division of the American Library Association. As you walked into this room, I'm sure you noticed the amazing uh, Paige Battle and her recorded announcement of the Alex Awards. I would like to ask the Alex Award Chair, Paige, and her members of her committee to please stand and be recognized. The Margaret A. Edwards Award was established in 1988 and honors an author and specific titles of that author for significant and lasting contribution to, the young, to young adult literature. The award recognizes an author's work in helping adolescents become aware of themselves and addressing issues about their role and importance of relationships in society and in the world. It is sponsored by School Library Journal and administered annually by YALSA. The award is named for Margaret A. Edwards, a pioneer in youth services. Through her work at the Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore, Edwards demonstrated that only through literature would young adults move beyond themselves into a larger world. 
this year's winner of the Margaret A. Edwards Award for Significant and Lasting Contribution to Young Adult Literature is Sharon M. Draper for Tears of a Tiger, Forged by Fire, Darkness Before Dawn, Battle of Jericho, Copper Sun, and November Blues. All published by Athenium Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing. Sharon M. Draper is a New York Times best-selling author who has received the Coretta Scott King Award for both Copper Sun and Forged by Fire. Her book, Out of My Mind, has won multiple awards and been a New York Times bestseller for more than a year. She lives in Cincinnati, where she has taught high school English for 25 years and has been named National Teacher of the Year. The Margaret A. Edwards Award is conducted virtually, but if there are members of the committee, I would like to ask Margaret Edwards Chair Sophie Brookover and her committee to stand and be recognized. The William C. Morris Award honors a book written for young adults by a first time, previously published author. The award's namesake is William C. Morris, an influential innovator in the publishing world and an advocate for marketing books for children and young adults. William, called Bill by his friends and colleagues, left an impressive mark on the field of children and young adult literature. He was beloved in the publishing field and by library professionals for his generosity and marvelous enthusiasm for promoting literature to children and teens. The William C. Morris Award Committee selected five finalists for December. They are The Carnival at Bray, written by Jesse Ann Foley and published by Elephant Rock Books. The Story of Owen, Dragon Slayer of Trondheim, written by E.K. Johnston and published by Carol Rhoda Lab, an imprint of Carol Rhoda Books, a division of Learner Publishing Group. Gabby, A Girl in Pieces, written by Isabel Quintero, published by Cinco Puntos Press. And uh, The Scar Boys, written by Len Valos and published by Egmont Publishing. And the Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, written by Leslie Walton and published by Candlewick Press. The winner of the 2015 William C. Morris Award is Isabella Quintero for Gabby, A Girl in Pieces, published by Cinco Punto Press. Aspiring poet Gabby Hernandez is have, having just completed her senior year. One of her best friends is pregnant and the other just came out. Even as her mother worries that she will become a bad girl, Gabby adds romance and the quest for college to her already full plate. The presentation of the Morris Award will take place at 10.30 a.m. this morning in room West 181 of McCormick Place with Jesse Ann Foley, Isabel Quintero, Len Valos, and Leslie Walton attending. I would like to thank the William C. Morris Committee for their efforts in selecting today's honorees. Will the Morris Chair Robin F. Kurz and her committee please stand and be recognized. The Excellence in Nonfiction Award honors the best nonfiction books published for young adults aged 12 to 18 each year. The committee selected five award finalists in December. They are Laughing at My Nightmare, written by Shane Burka and published by Roaring Book Press, an imprint of Macmillan's, Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. The Family Romanov, Murder, Rebellion, and the Fall of Imperial Russia, written by Candace Fleming and published by Schwartz and Wade, an imprint of Random House Children's Books. 
Ida M. Tarbell, the woman who challenged big business and won. Written by Emily Arnold Cult McCulley and published by Clarion Books, an imprint in Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for young readers. The Port Chicago, 50 Disaster, Mutiny, and the Fight for the Civil Rights. Written by Steve Shanklin and published by Roaring Book Press, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. And popular, Vintage Wisdom for a Modern Geek. Written by Maya Van Wagenen and published by Dutton, an imprint of Penguin Young Readers Group. The winner of the 2015 Excellence in Nonfiction Award is Popular, Vintage Wisdom for a Modern Geek, written by Maya Van Wagenen and published by Dutton, an imprint of Penguin Young Readers Group. This memoir of Maya Van Wagenen's eighth grade year is one part 1950s popularity guidebook mixed with two parts courage and one truly modern geek girl. She uses Betty Cornell's teenage popularity guide to take on the social hierarchy of her school and manages to achieve acceptance and understanding. The presentation of the Excellence in Nonfiction Award will take place at 10.30 this morning in room W181 of McCormick Place. I would like to thank the Excellence in Nonfiction Committee Award for their efforts in selecting uh, today's honorees. Will Chair Sharon Rollins and her committee please stand and be recognized. The, Audi the Odyssey Award is an annual award given to the producer of the best audiobook for children or young adults available in English in the United States. The Odyssey Award is jointly administered by ALSC and YALSA, both divisions of the American Library Association, and is sponsored by Booklist Magazine. The committee chose three Odyssey Honor audiobooks. They are Five, six, seven, eight, published by Children's Audio Works, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Audio Divisions, Simon & Schuster Inc., written and narrated by Tim Fetterly. The Scandalous Sisterhood of Prick Willow Place, produced by Listening Library, an imprint of Penguin Random House Audio Publishing Group, written by Julie Berry and narrated by Jane Entwistle. And A Snicker of Magic, produced by Scholastic Audiobooks, written by Natalie Lloyd, and narrated by Cassandra Morris. And now, I am pleased to announce the winner of the Odyssey Award for the best audio pro book produced for children or young adults. Horse, a game of basketball and imagination, produced by Live Oak Media, written by Christopher Meyer, and narrated by Dion Graham and Christopher Myers. <clears throat> Two boasting kids try to outdo each other during a pickup game with increasingly imaginative and absurd plays. Outstanding sound effects from hoop swishes to horse whinnies take this production to great heights. Myers and Graham's playful banter over a funky beat make this a slam dunk production and I'm pleased to present a brief audio clip. Okay, I'm gonna stand here at half court with my back to the hoop, and I'm gonna skyhook this ball clear across the court into that basket with my eyes closed, standing on one foot over my left shoulder. Uh. Whew. <laughs> Didn't know I could go left, did you? You're probably a specialist in left. Left back, left behind, left out. <laughs> I would like to thank the Odyssey Award Committee for their efforts in selecting today's nominees. Would Odyssey Award Chair Dawn Rutherford and her committee please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Our next award is the Michael L. Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. This award 
first given in 2000, is named for the late Michael L. Prince, a Topeka, Kansas school librarian who had a passion for books, reading, and literacy, and a commitment to finding the right book for the right student. The award is administered annually by Yalsa and is sponsored by Booklist Magazine. The committee chose four Prince Honor books. They are And We Stay by Jenny Hubbard and published by Delacorte Press, an imprint of Random House Children's Books, a division of Random House Inc., a Penguin Random House Company. Reeling from her boyfriend's dramatic suicide, Emily buries her anguish at a new boarding school where she finds healing through poetry. Hubbard's gem-like prose beautifully balances Emily's stunning poetry. The Carnival at Bray by Jessie Ann Foley and published by Elephant Rock Books. In 1993, Maggie is dismayed to leave Chicago and her beloved Uncle Kevin behind when she moves to a small Irish town. Yet it is within this evocative setting that Foley unwinds Maggie's exceptional coming-of-age tale where Maggie discovers music and forgiveness as antidotes for grief. Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith and published by Dutton Books, an imprint of Penguin Group USA, a Penguin Random House company. Historian Austin Scherzba is in love with his best girlfriend, Shan. He is also in love with his best boyfriend, Robbie. Mastermind Smith takes these tender facts and swirls them into a whirlwind tale of carnivorous praying mantises, the history of the world, the role of the individual, and the end of all we know. And This One Summer by Mariko Tamaki, illustrated by Jillian Tamaki and published by First Second. Adolescence is at its precarious first bloom in the, su is this, in the subject of this sensitive graphic novel. The team of Mariko and Jillian Tamaki both show us and tell us of one special summer in Rose's life in a brilliant flow of pictures and text. And now I am pleased to announce the winner of the Michael L. Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson, published by Dial Books, an imprint of Penguin Group USA, a Penguin Random House company. Once inseparable, twins Noah and Jude are torn apart by a family tragedy that transforms their intense love for each other into intense anger. Timelines twist and turn around each other in a beautifully orchestrated series of love and longing. I would like to thank the Michael L. Prince Award Committee for their efforts to select today's honorees. Will Prince Chair Diane Colson and her committee please stand and be recognized? And now please join me in welcoming to the stage Ellen Reardon, President of the Association for Library Services to Children, who will present the remainder of today's awards. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everyone. The Association for, the Li for Library Service to Children, also known as ALSC, is the world's largest organization dedicated to the support and enhancement of service to children in all types of libraries. Our first award is the Cora Belpre Award that honors a Latino or Latina writer and illustrator whose work best portrays, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural experience in an outstanding work of literature for children and youth. I would now like to introduce Silvia Cisneros, President of the National Association to Promote Library and Information Service to Latinos and the Spanish-speaking, Reforma, who will announce the awards in both English and Spanish. Thank you, Alan. 
It is a pleasure to be here with all of you today. The Pura Bel Pre Award is co-sponsored by ALSC and Reforma, an affiliate of the American Library Association. Reforma works to recruit bilingual and bicultural library professionals and support staff and supports the development of library services and programs that meet the needs of the Latino community. Now, on with today's announcement. The committee chose three Pura Bel Pre honor books for illustration. Y ahora, el anuncio de hoy. El comité seleccionó tres libros de honor Pura Bel Pre en la categoría de ilustración. Little Roja Riding Hood, illustrated by Susan Guevara, written by Susan Middleton Elia, and published by G.P. Putman Sons, an imprint of Penguin Group USA. Little Roja Riding Hood, ilustrado por Susan Guevara, escrito por Susan Minnington Elia, en publicado y publicado por G.P. Putman Sons, División de Penguin Group USA. Green Chili is a pepper. Green is a chili pepper. Illustrated by John Parra, written by Rosanne Greenfield Tong, and published by Chronicle Books. Green is a Chili Pepper, ilustrado por John Parra, escrito por Rosanne Green, Greenfield Tong, y publicado por, por Chronicle Books. And, separate is never equal. <laughs> Sylvia Mendez and her family's fight for desegregation illustrated and written by Duncan Tonatiu and published by Abrams Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. Separate is never equal, Silvia Mendez and her family's fight for desegregation, ilustrado por Duncan Tonatiu, escrito por Duncan Tonatiu y publicado por Abrams Books for Young Readers, División de Abrams. And now, I am pleased to announce the winner of the Pura Bel Pre Award for illustration is, y ahora me complace anunciar que la ganadora del premio Pura Bel Pre de ilustración es, Viva Frida. Illustrated. Illustrated and written by Yuji Morales and published by Roaring Book Press and Neil Porter Brook. Viva Frida, ilustrado y escrito por Eugene Morales y publicado por Roaring Brook Press and a Neil Porter Book. Viva Frida uses rich, vibrant color photographs and minimal evocative text to beautifully portray the unique imagination and creativity of an iconic Latina artist. Morales blends a wide variety of mediums, stop motion puppets, acrylic paints, and digital manipulation, manipulation to create a whimsical picture book that will inspire your artistic sensibilities. Viva Frida usa fotografías de colores ricos y brillantes, así como un texto evocador mínimo para retratar con hermosura la original imaginación y creatividad de una icónica artista hispana. Morales combina una amplia gama de técnicas, marionetas en cámara lenta, pintura de acrílico y manipulación digital, creando un caprichoso libro ilustrado que inspira sus sensibilidades artísticas. The committee selected one Pura Bel Pre honor book for text. El comité seleccionó un libro de honor Pura Bel Pre en la categoría de narración. Portraits of Hispanic American Heroes, written by Juan Felipe Herrera, illustrated by Raul Colon, and published by Dial Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Penguin Group USA. Portraits of Hispanic American Heroes, escrito por Juan Felipe Herrera, ilustrado por Raúl Colón, y publicado por Dial Books for Young Readers, División de Penguin Groups, USA. This year's Pura Bel Pre Award for text goes to, este año, 
El premio Pura del Pre de Narración se le otorgó a I Lived on Butterfly Hill, written by Marjorie Agosin, illustrated by Lee White, and published by Athenian Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Publish Children's Publishing Division. I Lived on Butterfly Hill, escrito por Marjorie Agosin, ilustrado por Lee White, y publicado por Athenian Books for Young Readers, Casa Editorial de la División de Publicaciones Infantiles de Simon and Schuster. When warships appear, Celeste's idyllic life is shattered. As people disappear, Celeste's parents go into hiding, and she is sent into ex exile. When she returns home, she works to reunite people she loves and to move her, her country forward. Lyrically written, this chil Chilean story offers a refreshing perspective of resiliency. Cuando aparecen los barcos de guerra, se destruye la vida idílica de Celeste, su protagonista. Y cuando comienzan las, desapari las desapariciones de personas, los padres de Celeste se esconden y envían a la niña al exilio. A su regreso, Celeste se esfuerza en reunir a sus seres queridos y hacer que su país siga adelante. Esta historia, historia chilena, escrita líricamente por la aclamada poeta Marjorie Agosin, ofrece una refrescante perspectiva sobre la resiliencia. And now, will the Purabel Pre Award Chair, Tim Wadham, and his committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you, Sylvia. We're so thrilled that you could be with us today. Our next award is the May Hill Arbanath Lecture Award. Each year, an individual of distinction in the field of children's literature is chosen to deliver the May Hill Arbanath Lecture. The lecturer prepares and presents an original paper that makes a significant contribution to children's literature. The 2016 Arbanath Lecture will be delivered by Pat Mora. Pioneering author and literacy advocate Pat Mora has written more than three dozen books for young people that represent the Mexican-American experience. Mora's commitment to literacy for all children of all backgrounds motivated her to found El Dia de los Ninos, El Dia de los Libros, Children's Day Book Day, or Dia, a celebration of children, families, and reading. This flourishing family literacy initiative accumulates annually on April 30th, stated the 2016 Arbanath Committee Chair, Julie Casaro. Born and raised in El Paso, Texas, Mora grew up bilingual and bicultural. With degrees in English and speech, she was a teacher and university administrator before writing children's books. Known for her lyrical style, Mora's poetry and prose have won numerous awards, including a 2005 Bell Prey Honor Medal text for Donna Flora, A Tall Tale of a Giant Woman with a Great Big Heart, published by Knopf Books for Young Readers and illustrated by Raul Colon. Her generosity for sharing book joy, the phrase she coined for the power and pleasure of words, led Mora to launch Dia, which will observe its 20th anniversary in 2016. Will the May Hill Arbanath Honor Lecture Award Chair Julie Casaro and her committee please stand and be recognized. Next is the Mildred L. Batchelder Award, which honors the American publisher of the most outstanding title originally published in a language other than English in a country other than the United States and subsequently translated into English for publication in the United States. There are two Batchelder honor books. This year's honor books are Hidden, 
A Child's Story of the Holocaust, published by First Second, written by Loic de Valier, illustrated by Mark Lozano, and translated by Alexis Siegel. The second, Nine Open Arms, published by Enchanted Lion Books, written by Benny Linlaw, illustrated by Dasha Tolshakova, and translated by John Neo Hosen. This year's Mildred L. Batchelder Award goes to Mikis and the Donkey, published by Erdman's Books for Young Readers, an imprint of William B. Erdman's Publishing Company, written by Bibi Takanek and illustrated by Philip Hopman, translated by Laura Watkinson. Miki's simple, quiet life on the Greek island of Carfu is upended when his grandfather surprises him by buying him a donkey. During the following year, Miki's adventures with the donkey show the village what it means to care for one another. With the Mildred L. Batchelder Award Chair, Diane Janoff, and her committee, please stand and be recognized. I would now like to present the Robert F. Seibert Medal. The Seibert Medal honors the author and illustrator of the most distinguished informational book for children. Informational books are defined as those written and illustrated to present, organize, and interpret documentable, factual material for children. The award is named to commemorate Robert F. Seibert, founder of Bound to Stay Bound Books, Inc. The committee chose five Seibert Honor Books. Brown Girl Dreaming. Written by Jacqueline Woodson and published by Nancy Paulson Books, an imprint of Penguin Group USA. The Family Romanov, Murder, Rebellion, and the Fall of Imperial Russia. Written by Candace Fleming and published by Schwartz and Wade Books, an imprint of Random House Children's Books, a division of Random House LLC, a Penguin Random House Company. Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker. Written by Patricia Ruby Powell, illustrated by Christian Robinson, and published by Chronicle Books, LLC. Neighborhood Sharks, Hunting with the Great White of California's Farallon Islands, written and illustrated by Katherine Roy, and published by David McCauley Studios, an imprint of Roaring Book Press. And Separate is Never Equal. Sylvia Mendez and her family's fight for desegregation, written and illustrated by Duncan Tonico, and published by Abraham's Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Abrams. And now, I am pleased to announce the winner of the Robert F. Seibert Medal for the most distinguished informational book, The Right Word, Roger and His Thesaurus, written by Jen Bryant and illustrated by Melissa Sweet, and published by Erdman's Books for Young Readers, an imprint of William B. Erdman's publishing company. Peter Mark Roger's boyhood passion for list making and finding the right word for every situation led him to create his treasure house of a book, The Thesaurus. Jen, Jen Bryant's engaging, accessible narrative and Melissa Sweet's delightfully detailed mixed media illustrations meld together to create a marvel, a wonder, <clears throat> a surprise of a book. Will the Robert F. Seibert Medal Chair, Deborah Taylor, and her committee please stand and be recognized? <laughs> our next award is the Andrew Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Children's Video. The Carnegie Medal honors the most outstanding video production for children released during the previous year. The medal was established in 1991 with the support from the Carnegie Corporation of New York. This year's winner of the Carnegie Medal for Excellence in Children's Video is Me Jane, produced by Paul R. Gagne, Melissa Riley Ellert, Westonwood Studios, Inc. 
This transcendent adaption of Patrick McDonald's 2012 Caldecott Honor draws viewers into the childhood of young Jane Goodall, who, with beloved stuffed chimpanzee Jubilee, is transformed by what she observes in her own backyard, a magical world full of joy and wonder. And now, here's a clip. Jane often climbed her favorite tree, which she named Beach. She would lay her cheek against its trunk and seem to feel the sap flowing beneath the bark. Jane could feel her own heart beating, beating, beating. With the wind in her hair, she read and reread the books about Tarzan of the Apes in which another girl, also named Jane, lived in the jungles of Africa. Jane dreamed of a life in Africa too. A life living with and helping all animals. Will the Andrew Carnegie Medal Notable Children's Video Chair, Caitlin Dixon Jacobson, and members of her committee, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Next is the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award, which honors an author and illustrator whose books have made a substantial and lasting contribution to literature for children. This year's recipient is Donald Cruz. <laughs> Donald Cruz was born in Newark, New Jersey to a dressmaker and a railroad trackman. He graduated from Cooper Union for the advancement of science and art in New York City in 1959. He later married author and artist Ann Jonas in 1964. They have two daughters, Nina and Amy. His first book, We Read A to Z, was published in 1967 and is still in print. Donald Cruz's award-winning books include Freight Train, which was a Caldecott Honor Book in 1979, and Truck, a Caldecott Honor Book in 1981. Donald Cruz has elevated books for very young children to an art form. His bold illustrations raise the ordinary into stylized representations. The ingenious use of design and color has made his works both dynamic and accessible, especially for toddlers. Cruz remains popular with young children generation after generation. He has been consistently excellent with a wide range of titles such as Harbor, Parade, Shortcut and Big Mamas, all published by Green Willow Books. Will the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award Chair, Karen Nelson Hoyle, and members of her committee, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award honors the illustrator of a book for beginning readers and author who demonstrate great creativity and imagination in their literary and artistic achievements to engage children in reading. The award is named for the world-renowned children's author, Theodore Geisel, AKA Dr. Seuss. This award committee has selected two Geisel honor books. This year's honor books are Mr. Putter and Tabby Turn the Page. Written by Cynthia Ryland, illustrated by author Arthur Howard, and published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company. And Waiting is Not Easy, 
written and illustrated by Mo Willems and published by Hyperion Books for Children, an imprint of Disney Book Group. This year's Theodore Seuss Geisel Award goes to You Are Not Small, written by Anna Kang and illustrated by Christopher Wan and published by Two Lions, New York. Using simple words, expressive illustrations, and comparative concepts familiar to children, You Are Not Small creates an immersive story ideal for developing readers. A heated debate between two furry creatures escalates until surprising arrivals offer a new perspective to show that size is relative and maybe their differences weren't quite so big. Will the Theodore Seuss Geisel Award Chair, Kevin DeLecky, and members of his committee please stand and be recognized. <clears throat> and now for the announcement of the oldest and most widely known awards, the Caldecott and Newberry Medals. First awarded in 1938 in honor of the 19th century English illustrator Randolph Caldecott, the Caldecott Medal is awarded to the artist of the most distinguished American picture book for children published during the previous year. The committee has chosen six Caldecott honor books. They are Nana in the City, illustrated and written by Lauren Castillo, and published by Clarion Books, an imprint of Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company. The Noisy Paint Box, the colors and sounds of Kadinsky's abstract art, illustrated by Mary Graham Frey, written by Barb Rosenstock, and published by Alfred A. Knopf, an imprint of Random House Children's Book, a division of Random House, Inc., New York. Sam and Dave Dig a Hole. Illustrated by John Clausen and written by Mac Barnett and published by Candlewick Press. Viva Frida. Illustrated and written by Yui Morales and published by Roaring Book Press and Neil Porter Book. The Right Word. Roger and His Thesaurus. Illustrated by Melissa Sweet and written by Jen Bryan and published by Ehrman Books for Young Readers, an imprint of W.B. Ehrman's Publishing Company and This One Summer, illustrated by Jillian Tamaki, by Marco Tamaki, and published by First Second. <clears throat> so now, the winner of this year's Randolph Caldecott Medal for Outstanding Illustration of a Children's Book is The Adventures of Beagle, The Unimaginary Friend. <clears throat> illustrated and written by Dan Santon and published by Little Brown and Company, a division of Hashit Sant Book Group. In four delightful visual chapters, Beagle, an imaginary friend, undergoes an emotional journey looking for his human. Santon uses fine details kaleidoscopic saturated colors and exquisite curved and angular lines to masterfully convey the emotional essence of this special childhood relationship. Will the Randolph Caldecott Medal Chair, Junko Yukota, and members of her committee please stand and be recognized. Thank you for all your good work. And finally, the John Newberry Medal. First awarded in 1922 and named after the 18th century British bookseller John Newberry, this medal is awarded annually to the author of the most distinguished book for children published during the previous year. Two titles have been named Newberry Honor Books. <laughs> they are El Defo. Written and illustrated by C.C. Bell and published by Amulet Books and Imprint of Abrams. And 
Brown Girl Dreaming. Written by Jacqueline Woodson, published by Nancy Paulson Books, an imprint of Penguin USA, LLC. And now, the winner of this year's John Newberry Medal for the year's most distinguished contribution to American literature for children is The Crossover. <laughs> Written by Fuemi Alexander and published by Houghton Mifflin Harper. Twelve-year-old Josh narrator Josh Bell uses the rhythms of a poetry jam to emulate the moving and grooving, poppin' and rockin' life on the basketball court with his twin brother J.B. This powerful novel in verse paints an authentic portrait of a close-knit family on the brink of crisis. Swish. This book is nothing but knit. Will the John Newberry Medal Chair, Randall Enos, and his committee please stand and be recognized? From crowns to basketballs to globes to Dr. Seuss t-shirts. I want to thank all the committees and their chairs for making today's announcements possible. Without your hard work, we would not have any awards to announce. Congratulations on a fantastic job. Well done. For more detailed information regarding any of today's winners, please visit ilovelibraries.org slash YMA. Thank you so much for joining us on this snowy morning and braving the slushy streets, or joining us via webcast, um, cozy in your pajamas or at school. Please be sure to take all your personal items with you when you leave the hall, and thank you so much for joining us here at the Youth Media Awards. Have a great day.